These are the words of Gaius Julius Caesar. The customs of the Germans differ widely from those of the Gauls, for they do not have druids to preside over religious services, nor do they give much attention to sacrifice. They count only the gods that they can see, the ones that can grant them favors, the gods being the sun, Vulcan and the moon. Their whole life is occupied in hunting and in the pursuits of the military art, from childhood, they devote themselves to fatigue and hardships. Those who have remained chaste for the longest time receive the greatest commendation amongst their people. They think that by this, the growth is promoted. By this, the physical powers are increased and the sinews are strengthened. And to have had a knowledge of a woman before the 20th year, they reckon among the most disgraceful acts of which matter there is no concealment because they bathe promiscuously in the rivers and only use skins or small cloaks of deer's hides, a large portion of the body being in consequence naked. They do not pay much attention to agriculture and the large portion of their food consists in milk, cheese and flesh nor has anyone a fixed quantity of land or his own individual limits. But the magistrates and the leading men each year apportion to the tribes and families who have united together as much land as and in the place in which they think proper, and the year after compel them to remove elsewhere. For this enactment they advance many reasons, lest seduced by long-continued custom they may exchange their ardor in the waging of war for agriculture, lest they may be anxious to acquire extensive estates, and the more powerful drive the weaker from their possessions, lest they construct their houses with too great a desire to avoid cold and heat, lest the desire of wealth spring up, from which cause divisions and discords arise, and that they may keep the common people in a contented state of mind when each sees his own means placed on an equality with those of the most powerful. It is the greatest glory to the several states to have as wide deserts as possible around them, their frontiers having been laid waste. They consider this the real evidence of their prowess, that their neighbors shall be driven out of their lands and abandon them, and that no one dare settle near them. At the same time, they think that they shall be on that account the more secure, because they have removed the apprehension of a sudden incursion. When a state either repels war waged against it or wages it against another, Magistrates are chosen to preside over that war with such authority that they have power of life and death. In peace there is no common magistrate, but the chiefs of provinces and cantons administer justice and determine controversies among their own people. Robberies which are committed beyond the boundaries of each state bear no infamy, and they avow that these are committed for the purpose of disciplining their youth and or preventing sloth. And when any of their chiefs has said in an assembly that he will be their leader, let those who are willing to follow give in their names, they who approve of both the enterprise and the man arise and promise their assistance and are applauded by the people. Some of them, as have not followed him, are accounted in the number of deserters and traitors, and confidence in all matters is afterward refused them. To injure guests they regard as impious, they defend from Wong those who have come to them for any purpose whatsoever, and esteem them inviolable. To them the houses of all are open, and maintenance is freely supplied. The interior portion of Britain is inhabited by those of whom they say that it is handed down by tradition that they were born in the island itself. 
the maritime portion by those who had passed over from the country of the Belge for the purpose of plunder and making war. The number of the people is countless and their buildings exceedingly numerous. For the most part, very like those of the Gauls, the number of the cattle is great. They use either brass, which is imported, or iron rings determined at a certain weight as their money. There, as in Gaul, is timber of every description except beech and fir. They do not regard it lawful to eat the hare and the cock and the goose. They, however, breed them for amusement and pleasure. The climate is more temperate than in Gaul, the colds being less severe. The island is triangular in its form, and one of its sides is opposite to Gaul. One angle of this side, which is in Kent, whither almost all ships from Gaul are directed, looks to the east, the lower looks to the south. This side extends about 500 miles. Another side lies towards Spain and the west, on which part is Ireland, less, as is reckoned, than Britain by one half. But the passage from it into Britain is of equal distance with that from Gaul. In the middle of this voyage is an island, which is called Mona. Many similar islands besides are supposed to lie there, of which islands some have written that at the time of the winter solstice it is night there for 30 consecutive days. We, in our inquiries about that matter, ascertained nothing except that, by accurate measurements with water, we perceived the nights to be shorter there than on the continent. The length of this side, as their account states, is 700 miles. The third side is towards the north, to which portion of the island no land is opposite, but an angle of that side looks principally towards Germany. This side is considered to be 800 miles in length, thus the whole island is about 2,000 miles in circumference. The most civilized of all these nations are they who inhabit Kent, which is entirely a maritime district, nor do they differ much from the Gallic customs. Most of the inland inhabitants do not sow corn, but live on milk and flesh, and are clad with skins. All the Britons, indeed, dye themselves with woad, which occasions a bluish color, and thereby have a more terrible appearance in fight. They wear their hair long and have every part of their body shaved, except their head and upper lip. Ten and even twelve have wives common to them, and particularly brothers among brothers and parents among their children. But if there be any issue by these wives, they are reputed to be the children of those by whom, respectively, each was first espoused when a virgin. <laughs>